Hello, Rocket fans, and uh, welcome back to the uh, Rocket Shop. I'm standing here with Casper from uh, Stanley Creative, and we are going to talk with him about uh, what he's doing for us at the moment. Casper, will you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I am 20 years old, and I've been working with 3D graphics and, and games for like seven years now and uh, yeah now i'm doing some stuff with rockets yeah so what, what is it that you're doing what are you working on i'm working on a virtual reality experience where you can see rockets with your own eyes which i think is something really cool especially when you're from denmark as i am uh, where you don't get to see rockets as much yeah. i guess uh, it's not as easy and as if you live in the United States, for example. So, uh, yeah, I'm just modeling a lot of rockets and creating a, an app where you can see it if you have a VR headset. Okay, and what will the final product look like when you walk around in that world? Uh, yeah, I haven't really decided yet. I'm still working on the, on the design, like uh, what's the best way to to experience a rocket when it's not in real life. Uh, there's a lot of design decisions in that. And especially having like multiple rockets beside each other, that's really difficult because you don't see that in real life as much. Like on a launch pad, that's not gonna be four rockets beside each other. Uh, so I have to make some decisions about that. And yeah, so the final product will hopefully just be a very good VR experience where, where you can compare rockets and like take them apart and see inside them and like maybe launch them. Yeah. Okay. Why did you choose rockets? Because they're awesome. Uh, <laughs> like because it's it's so difficult. I think like the that's what attracts me about rockets. The immense power and like everything has to go right like there can be a thousand thing, things a million things that has to go right but only one thing has to go wrong and it's all bad we, we uh, know about that yeah so and for example in sport i also watch formula one because it's kind of the same thing so i think that's the part that attracts me about rockets yeah so will the next project be something with formula one cars instead <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think so. Uh, they're like very detailed stuff and yeah, I don't know if that's my level yet. Okay. So why, uh, in more detail, why did you come up with the rockets in VR? What is it that uh, VR can do for you? Because not everyone can come to our workshop, for example. Exactly. And, exactly. and see our rockets or go to uh, NASA or SpaceX. Exactly. That's, the, that's, I, that's what I think will attract people, I, I hope, uh, with the with rockets VR is that you can actually see rockets if you don't have the opportunity, and even even if you have the opportunity, you can like uh, you can put them beside each other and compare them to each other, which have, has been really exciting with Speaker, for example, uh, putting that beside other crewed suborbital launches. I think that will attract people having, uh, for example, if you live in Denmark or, or some other places that that don't launch rockets and thus doesn't have uh, rockets in in the country. Uh, I think that's what's gonna attract people. You mentioned uh, other suborbital vehicles. Um, yes. Has anything surprised you on on comparing those different vehicles? Definitely. Speaker is very small. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. like it's gonna be very cramped. I think. Um, but but it's also very different like but it's it's really cool comparing it to new shepherd but but especially yeah. Re redstone mercury because that was the first one that launched uh, an american astronaut into space and um and that's just much bigger because the technology i guess was it was the 60s so it's a long time ago so that's really exciting with the new shepherd that's going to hold multiple people so that's a bit different um, and also has to come back down and land. I think speaker is really exciting because it's just so small and sort of the bare minimum to get a, a person into space. Absolutely. You've done a lot of different uh, comparisons from the outside. 
Do you have any plans on doing something from the inside, from the uh, cockpit point of view? That's a good question. I don't know. I think, um, but there's a lot more detail in that. There's a lot more work. <laughs> sort of like doing interior design or something like that. There's a lot more detail to get if everything to look right. Um, with with rockets from the outside and when you're far away to be able to see the scale of them. There's a lot less detail you need to make it look fine. Um, so maybe in the future, but that's not a, I don't think that's a priority. Uh, but, but maybe like comparing the capsules alone for crude uh, vehicles. Yeah, that would be awesome to, to get a better feeling also yeah. to compare um, the crew size and uh, the purpose of yeah the exactly uh, and having like stats on the on the uh, square meters that the or the cube cube meters mm -hmm. that the uh, that the uh, crew will have uh, so. float around you know. yeah you talked about priorities how do you uh, find time to do uh, to do this good question uh, so I have a full time job and then. When I get home, I just I keep working because I can't not. Um, so that's basically what my time goes with when I'm not at work. And in my weekends, when I'm not visiting my parents or watching Formula One, <laughs> I'm uh, working on Rockets VR or other games and stuff. That, yeah, that's, that's how I find time with it. And then sometimes I relax. Sometimes, okay. Um, you've been so kind and, and sent a lot of uh, the graphics to us that you have made. Uh, but if people want to find uh, the stuff that you are making uh, on their own, where should they go to do that? I post a lot on Twitter um, and on my Instagram. And if you want to see Rockets VR stuff and exclusive stuff, you can get that on my Patreon. Um, yeah, that's a lot of exclusive stuff there, like uh, in development stuff of Rockets VR and, and some high quality renders because you can't really get those on, on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, it compresses a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then I have, I've just started the Stanley Creative YouTube channel where I'm going to put uh, development logs, uh, videos. So yeah, those, those are the places mainly, but Twitter is where I post mostly. And I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a link below here somewhere that uh, you can use. Or maybe up here. Serunas, not if you agree. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Casper, for uh, coming by and yep. uh, visiting us. And You're I'm welcome. sure we, uh, I hope that we're going to see a lot of more from you. Definitely, definitely. Excellent, yeah. thank you so much. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a nonprofit all volunteer project. The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, you can help us out by going over to our website www.compsub.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.